No, I wasn't really aware of it until a roommate. I was living in a 10 bedroom share in Chinatown, like straight up illegal, like an ex brothel that was like month to month. Yeah, it had like office tile ceiling, like you could punch in the squares and definitely rats in the ceiling and stuff. (laughs) And this French kid, Sylvan, was playing a three dollar knockout 90 man sit and goes on full tilt. And was like, yeah, you can win ninety seven dollars. And I was like, oh, my God. And then played on his account for like two days. Had no clue that you're not supposed to do that. And he's like, get your own account. And then just kind (laughs) of then got into watching poker from there. And then was like caught up on the old episodes, watched all the stuff, watched you obviously forever. Like I love the old edited episodes of of WSOP. Mm-hmm. Like I'll still watch. They're so great. And I'm so glad I got to play with those Rio chips once in the main that yeah. I that I watched forever. <laughs> I only accumulated two greens, I think, but whatever. <laughs> this is the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. All right. Welcome back. Episode 12. Of the, it's, we've adjusted the title, thanks to our special guest, the Norman, Chad, and Jesse show. Norman, I'm sorry that we didn't make a poster with your face on it yet. We can for next week. Can you be here on Friday? No. Okay, never mind. Then we'll stick with the Chad and Jesse for the future from here on. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Again, thanks again, Norman, for joining me here in the podcast studio as my co-host while Chad Holloway is off fulfilling his survivor dreams i don't know yeah it's interesting that somebody who works for poker news can take off during the middle of the main event to go do something else uh that's that's pretty interesting it's like the pope saying on easter sunday hey you know i think i'm going to go to dave and buster's he he said that he was here last on day one b and then just uh took a little siesta yeah Gone. yeah yeah i mean what's happened since the record was broken no payout big deal. bubble you know some big things ah, he's seen it before he always tells me how many w's this is my 11th 12th 14th w's he knows. He knows what he's missing. I mean, it's the same stuff as last year, except the record broke and all these great things. That's a big deal. The record broke. It is a big deal. It is a massive deal. You, so last week when we talked about this, you know, we'll, we'll go into our main topic shortly. But you said uh, we hope the record breaks, but not 10K because it'd be great to save that for next year to continue to have ladders. <laughs> right. Because yes. like, you have to have attainable goals. I mean, we obviously broke it. And we crawled just over 10K, which we is did. great. But I just thought that would have been a nice goal for next year. Right. Because now what is it? Like now the, the big one's going to be 11K, then 15K. Like we have some, I mean, those are going to be massive jumps. And like you, like we both agreed last time, the venue is going to get smaller and smaller as we grow and grow. And uh, yeah, it's just, it is what it is. Well, what it is is good. It's very good. The poker interest good. is there. And we see it all around town besides the World Series of Poker, just incredible tournament fields at other properties. So it's just it's just great to see for the industry. Yeah, no kidding. Our main topic today focuses on the 2023 WSOP and the payouts and the reaction on social by, by the whole crowd. Everybody had a everybody had a take, a hot take on this. And man, it was spicy. It got instantly spicy. I don't know if, yeah. It got instantly spicy. I just like to re- remind people that the whole crowd is a Twitter mob. Yes. And the Twitter mob is usually a lot smaller than you think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it starts on Twitter. And when you have a Twitter mob, that just that just gets rolling. And most people, to me, and we'll talk about it, it's much ado about virtually nothing. But the Twitter mob disagrees. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, to look at the payouts, you know, we got 12.1 million up top, 900K for ninth, focusing mostly on the final tables where we're going to focus on first. I mean, it is shocking that as we break the record, as we um, have the top, the biggest top prize ever for the WCB event, that years past, a million, you know, a million for every final table list was a big deal, but not this year. Yeah. Again, to me, again, if I were them, I would have made the ninth place spot a million instead of 900K. So yeah. everybody's a millionaire at the final table. That might be a misfire on their part. It, it's not exactly. It's close. No, it should be a million. But to the fact that there's this much of a rumble about it, it's not like basic constitutional rights are being violated. Right. Uh, they made a decision on how they're doing the, the, the payouts and how flat it was going to be and how much it was going up top. And just everyone went crazy. And there's not that much to go crazy over, actually, if you look at the past. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's like, like this is a surprise, right? I mean, we've often, I mean, even to look at the 06 payouts, you know, we're, we are, what, what is this? Uh, how many years is in 06? 17. There we go. Thank you. Uh, first place paid 1200K, second place paid 6.1 million. Yeah, so they talked 12, about 12 million. 12, 12, they talked about the large. big difference. <laughs> so look, they're, they're playing for five and a half million dollar difference. You just, 
Yeah. In the Jamie Gold year, the other big year, they played for a bigger amount, almost six million dollars. Right. Uh, heads up. And that's just that's just what has become the WCP final. We know we want big money up top because that's what people who are not already part of the poker community that that's what's going to get the attention. That is what gets the attention. So I can yeah. see them trying to break the record of the twelve million. A hundred percent. And people complain about being too top heavy, and I've always complained about being top, too top heavy. I like it being spread out more among the economy. This is a lot less top heavy than it used to be. Just when MoneyMaker won, which is twenty years ago. Can you do the math? Mm, yep. Yeah. 20, yep. When MoneyMaker won, <laughs> okay, t- this year we'll get twelve million dollar winner out of a ninety three million dollar. Okay, almost 13% goes to the winner. Yeah. Okay, what Moneymaker won? More than 30% went to the winner. And him and Farha split half of the total pool 20 years ago. So we have flattened it. It's no longer as top heavy. And we've gone from 10% to 15%, which I'm in favor of. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Looking, comparing the numbers, actually, it's surprising how comparable these are. Even the top four from 06 to this year. In 06, Jimmy Gold took home 12 million. Paul Waska took home 6.1. Michael Binger. Binger, 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 Michael Binger to come 4.1 million and Alan Cunningham in fourth to come 3.6. This year, the numbers are 12.1 million, 6.5 million, 4 million and 3 million. Very comparable. I mean, honestly, it, it's not surprising we go this high that, but also it's what continues to be forgotten is the 10% payout versus the 15%. Yeah. Like we, we pay more people now. We, the, the men, the min cash is much bigger. You know, what was it like? It was like t- just over 10 K in 06. You know, actually speaking about the min cash, what would the Twitter mob <clears> done <throat> in 1988 when Johnny Chan won his oh, second yeah. consecutive title? And in 1988, Phil Helmuth that year finished 33rd. He was knocked out by Johnny Chan, actually, the year before he beat him heads up. Whoa. And what did Phil Helmuth earn for 33rd in 1988? 7,500. The payouts used to be for a few years oh. where you did not get back all your money as a min cash. You got back 7,500. <laughs> I mean, to Twitter, again, yeah, I don't want to get started on yeah. Twitter again, but Twitter should be shuttered. Twitter should be quarantined. <laughs> you know, it, it, I'm going to give you an actual fact yeah. that 25% of Twitter users create 90%, 97% of all tweets. Think about that. So a very small percentage create I'm all the songs into the yeah. poker community. It's even worse. There are 17 people. You know who you are. There are 17 <laughs> people who create 99% of the tweets. And poker is always complaining. If, if the World Series of poker found a cure for cancer, poker players would say, yeah, but the bananas are still $5. It's just, it's absurd how much we complain. No, you're right. And that's the thing is if no one's going to be, there's no, there's no end result where everyone's happy. Either we we make it so low. I saw a tweet today that says something like, like they'd be happy with four million up top. Like for a ninety something million prize pool, you want four million up top? No way. No, just- so you're right. No matter what you do, nobody's happy. Right. Somebody's not happy. And I've seen solutions both ways. You just went that way. Yeah. I saw some poker pros talk about going back to 10% or 12.5% yeah. instead of going so far out and giving so much. So whatever you do, we always it's have another always, solution. Absolutely. There's and everybody's a backseat. Prize pool structure driver, huh? <laughs> no joke. No joke. So that's what I want to talk to you about too, Norman. What would we do? What would we do to make this better? Let's go pros and cons. Which side do you want? Do you want to be the, the happy side of this prize pool layout? Or do you want to be the, the bad side? Which one? I, I want to be the happy side. You want to be the happy side? I want to be the okay. happy side. All right. I'll give you some cons. Um, my number one con is, you're right, ninth place, making less than a million. How how lame. I wish, uh, I wish they'd take that. I even saw one where it was twelve million and one dollar could have been first place yes. and make that make that ninth place one million. Okay. It was easy to correct that. They went that way. I'd still say, hey, you made nine hundred thousand dollars for two weeks' work. Be happy. Okay. Next one would be, I mean, to go from six point five up to twelve, that's too big of a jump. Too big of a jump for first and second. Where are we doing this? This is this is like we've already worked this hard and now there's six million that big of a piece of the prize pool. And that, like, why? Unnecessary. I think it's kind of sexy. <laughs> You're playing for $6 million heads up. I don't like it when you say sexy. I okay. Don't like please, okay. <laughs> please, please never say that <laughs> never again. again. Yeah. Uh, I won't say the S word uh, again. Okay, no problem. Oof. I mean, that's, uh, those are my biggest two. Uh, two eh. I mean, honestly, honestly, uh, it's hard for me to have cons because I really, I really love yeah. WCP. And I love the big prizes up top, right? I mean, when you look at sports, when you look at big events, you want to know 
the big money. You look at golf, you look at things like that. And this is this is massive. We talk about basketball players sign massive contracts. That's where we see the big money there, right? And the then the when it comes to the World Series of Baseball, you know, you got the <laughs> World Series of Baseball. I have to say it that way when we're at the WSOP. Well, it is the World Series of Baseball. It is true. It is. So when there, you know, you talk about uh, players getting a bonus for making the for winning, et cetera. Right. Stuff, stuff like that. So for poker, this is where we we have to have this. No, it's great for marketing. It's <laughs> and I won't. It's an XC say number. Uh, you want you want the mainstream or the casual person to go, wow, they're playing for $12 million as the first prize. It's a big number. It attracts you. So 10 million yeah. attracts you, 12 million attracts you a little more. 12.1 doesn't do much for me, but 12 million <laughs> is a, a great number. Yeah. And it's just, it's one of the reasons a casual person will say, Hey, let me take a look at this. I can't believe how much money is at stake. Especially with the poker boom 2.0 that we're talking about as we're getting more people in, you know, with vlogs, with, you know, whatever it is, thanks to this, the work from home lifestyle and everything. We, we've definitely gotten new people to come in. And so to have those big money prizes up top is, uh, it has to happen. I think at this stage, this isn't, you know, there's 365 days a year. There's thousands of poker tournaments worldwide, all, all over the calendar. But this one, we need this. We can't, we can't change it. We need this one event to be the one that is, is crazy, out of control. If you don't like it, please still play because we need this. We need these numbers to keep growing. And so. you, you make me think that next year, uh, we need to break the record again because yeah. next year's a 366 day year. It's a leap year. Oh. So that extra day oh. and extra people playing on extra day, I'd be disappointed if we didn't get up to 12 and a half million next year. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, there you go. We've given our thoughts. We'll move on. It's time, Norman, Chad, for calling the clock. Let's bring up the board. Let's set a timer. Got our eight brand new topics. We'll go ahead and start right now. Hoodie Allen just just leaves. What the hell? What a, what a rapper thing to do. What a rapper thing to do. Yeah. But I respect the decision. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, of course. It's just, it's just insane. It's incredible. It's something we're not used to. No, you, you play the World Series on day two. <laughs> you decide, oh, that's right. I have a wedding to go to tomorrow where I'm a groomsman. So you leave your chips. You get blinded down a bunch. You go to the yeah. wedding and then you come back with your chips blinded down for day three. I mean, you got, you know, we don't, unfortunately, Hoodie Allen, someone we didn't have an opportunity to approach and ask him, you know, like, why did you choose this starting date? To hear it, because I'm sure he had plans, right? He probably played a certain day one for a reason, knowing day two, knowing the wedding. If, if, if the situation happens, I can still make it. But to get to that point where he has enough chips to say, all right, I got to just, I got to get to my jet, got to fly out here. And it all worked out, unfortunately. Well, it kind of worked out. And by the yeah. way, I, again, I, I respect his decision. He did it for a friend. I might not have abandoned my main event chips for a wedding. You know, ma marriage is a 50 50 oh. proposition, it's a coin flip. <laughs> so I would have stuck with my stack. But then he got burned because he came back, you know, he's coming back Sunday morning. He had a flight that he saw was going to be delayed three and a half hours, so he wasn't going to make it. So he switched to another flight. He gets there in time, and then on the fourth hand of the day, yeah, what happens to him? Yeah, he, he goes back to the wedding, I guess, basically. He's gone. He's dusted. Like, gets pocket aces and loses, and yeah. it's gone. Yeah. So he actually would have done better to be on the delayed flight. That hand never happens. Yeah. And then he still might be here today. I mean, you just got to go with what you, <laughs> you got to go with what, uh, what's in front of you. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But you did bring up a good point. He could have played two again. He could have played an earlier day too, so he didn't have to worry about leaving his chips, and then yeah. that wouldn't have been an issue. He still could have gone to the wedding. Yeah, no, it is what it is. No, I'll tell you what it is. He, 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 I, 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 I All right, Phil Homuth gets coolered out by Nicholas Rigby. He didn't do it with a dirty diaper. But my God, it was dirty. It was dirty. It was dirty, but it, it was Phil let himself. Be yeah. dirtied. I was surprised that this happened to Phil Helmuth. You were surprised? Really? Yeah, I'll tell you why I was surprised. Phil Helmuth, Please. you know, he famously on day one will not put like more than half of his stack at risk in any hand because you have so many blinds. There's no reason those day one chips aren't that valuable if you want to survive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. on day two, <clears throat> he started that hand with 80 big blinds. Jesse. Yeah, yeah. So that, that he went, I understand the road he went down with the 10 9 suited and he paired the 10 on the the flop, but to put those 80 big blinds all to work in that situation is very unfill Helmuth like on day two of the main event. So to remind you what happened here, we got Helmuth starting with nine, 10 of clubs, Nick Rigby with the ace, 10 of spades and the flop comes nine, 10 ace. They both flop two pair. 
And it's just one of the situations where it's like, I mean, the pot did get inflated. Rigby was definitely put some chips at work. He was not making this a small pot for Helmuth. And yeah, I mean, Helmuth was in a situation that the deuce of hearts on the turn. I mean, come on. It just was cooler. Yeah. Central it's setting up for the cooler. Right. And what I mean, it's also great is Helmuth didn't blow up or anything when, with, when he saw it. It's like, yep, that's how uh, it's unfortunate. This is just that's one he couldn't to, blow up over. Yeah. No joke. You know, and right? I, you know, I understood he trusted his read on Rigby, mm-hmm. but I can't believe he would risk such a huge stack on day two on that, on that read. And what he might want to think about, to tell you the truth, yeah, is, you know, I have an old rule, or there's an old rule, the larger the wedding, the shorter the marriage. Maybe the larger the grand entrance, the shorter oh. your time in the main event. Oh, I'm oh, you, it's possible. spicy, spicy, God. <clears throat> I mean, it's 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 unfortunate, but uh, Helmuth, Helmuth will be back in, uh, I hope he still wins his 18th bracelet. I mean, there's a well, chance he's, he's got not really done more. well in the main event. And let me tell you something else about Phil Let to the table. Gary Blackwood on Twitter, Gazzy B one two three three shared something that we were very shocked by. You heard about this, obviously. This is big news. Are you are you are you are you offended? That I interrupted you. No, not at all. I mean, stop talking when the buzzer is about to run out. Okay, not at all. you not know at the all. rules. Don't be surprised. Just okay, go ahead. here we go. G- Gary Blackwood uh, found out that someone at a table making day uh, making day four wrote a letter saying, "Please." Uh, it says, I've traveled all the way from China to participate in this prestigious WCP tournament and make it into the money circle means everything to me. Not only will a successful WCP performance greatly boost my chances of getting into an American university, but the prize may be used to fulfill a dream honeymoon with my beloved girlfriend, not fiance, girlfriend. There's a lot of, there's a lot of red flags here, Norman. <laughs> I came. I come to you with a heartfelt plea. I kindly ask for your support in a single request. Please refrain from raising during my very first big blind. It would mean the world if you grant... My goodness. Well, my goodness. And we all know what happened. We don't, we don't get to see if this actually took place, but, but we know this letter was out there and this is, it's kind of crazy that someone would make a, I it's crazy, but I give the guy credit for the effort, the moxie, the creativity. Oh, yeah. Now, as it turned out, the, the, the came around the small blind shoved on him, <laughs> but he did end up making <laughs> it, the, the, the guy did end up making the money. Yeah. So oh, again, it's is. against the rules. It's collusion. Right, of course. But of course. it does remind me about seven or eight years ago, I was on the bubble at a World Series event. Ellie Lezer's at my, my table, and he asked everybody at the table to let Norman don't raise his big blind. Really? And they did not. And I, I told Ellie, that's a great thought, but you can't do that. And yeah. I had actually ended up stone cold bubbling that tournament, the only one I've ever stone cold bubbled. And Ellie <laughs> then asked Jack Effel, let Norman, let Norman cash. It's good for poker. Let, 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 let the bubble cash. And Jack turned that down. So yeah, it's, it's a great, no, it's well, a great thought. No. And of course it's collusion technically, but yeah. at least the guy made the effort. I mean, crazy, crazy. The fact that he can print, have these printed as well. It's wild. Father, See, daughter. No, we're at the, where are we at? We're at the WCB bubble. Okay. The bubble has burst. I jumped ahead. The oh, the summer. bubble now has burst. The bubble has burst and man alive. It was spicy. This always happens. I was out there with my camera trying to find the right table. Man, it's not fun running through a giant room from the one wall to the wall back and forth. Trying, I, I filmed at least three tables where the uh, the all in doubled. It's like okay, here we go, another another one. But uh, but the bubble did burst. It was oh, what was the guy's name? It was Jeppe Bisgard, who ended up being our official bubble boy of the 2023 WSP main event. There were three who were all knocked out at the same time. That was uh. Oh, good Lord, I'm going to butcher these. Yu, Ki, Wang, Peter, Nye, and Jeppy. And uh, of course, being that there were there was one bubble and two payouts, they chopped it up. Each player took home 10K. And then they did a flip, three-handed flip to see who gets the seat. Jeppy Viscard now actually made more than the min cash. He got a 10K, 10K in his pocket and a 10K seat. Well, he's fortunate that way. He My should never goodness. been playing the Kings in that spot if you played the Kings in that, that spot. That was insane. It was wild because he had a big stack too. Yeah. Right, I was I was standing at one table where the big blind ha- was was forced in. He he was able to pull. Uh, he was able to make it through. Um, and so to see Jeppy go in there with that with that big stack out, you know, in late position and get called by aces. Who, who some? I mean, he had like what? It looked like I think at least three or four hundred k. So yeah, so I can see where you can you can do hay with that, but you don't want to put yourself at risk. Now, yeah. if you have a shorter stack, we had one person who folded pocket aces with a very. I, I understand that. At, at, 
completely. That was wild. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But that, you know, you're doubling that stack isn't going to uh, increase your EV all that much. So if you, if you got a small stack, you got Kings or aces. I, first, first of all, if it was me, cause I want to cash, mm-hmm. I'm not going to look at my hands or I'm, I'm even going to walk away from the table. Right. Like I, might, I have a diamond card. I might walk away from the table, use the diamond card to get a free Pepsi. And then I get the, with my points and I get the Pepsi and the 15. Okay. Let's move in. on. But, father, daughter, make the cash. Father, daughter, make the money. I think I think I think our, I think we may have let you go a little longer there. Father Dyer make the money in the main event. I love this. This is so sweet, so wholesome. I don't know if it's your cup of tea. I don't know if you're the wholesome man here. I'm the, more wholesome than I look. You I, are I like a good father daughter story. Okay, there you go. And it was it was people who are definitely very friendly and familiar in the poker me. Amanda Botfeld and her father David, who were tag team partners. I think it was in the 2021. Yes, tag team. Yeah, they made the final table. They Love finished to see that. third. Yeah, it was sick. It was really sick. Um, and then Amanda blew my mind last uh, last winter with all her WPT giveaways that she yeah. did. She is an employee WPT, so she could not win a seat that she could play in the December you know, World Champion. But she gave away all these seats in really creative, fun ways. And for me, I, w- I just love seeing what she did. It was so such a positive influence. And so another great story with Amanda doesn't shock me. I'm very happy to see this, that she and her dad both, not only cash, but I think at least at the start of today, we're both still in. Uh, he, uh, the father busted Amanda is still in as of day five. Okay. And I'll tell you how heartwarming it was to me. They now make my top five father daughter combinations of all time. Number one is Henry Fonda and Jane Fonda. Number two, John Voigt and Angelita Jolie. Number three, Ryan and Tatum O'Neill. Number four, Atticus <laughs> Finch and Scout. Do you know Atticus Finch and Scout? Yes. Yeah. And number five, David and Amanda. I um, I, where am I? Am I on that list with my kids? I have two daughters. Because you know my daughters. They're, you're their father, you're not going to make that list. Uh, Your daughters are, 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 are great. I don't know about you. Thanks By the way, we, we sometimes forget yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. the late Doral Brunson had a daughter who played. And actually in 06 main event, Pam Brunson and Todd Brunson both cashed, brother and sister oh, of sick. Doyle in 06. Yeah. Yeah, but you're right. We do forget. Let me tell you something else I want to say. <laughs> If you allow me to. WSOP champs make day five. Unfortunately, they're already out. <laughs> the start of day, we saw Moneymaker and Joe Hashem as our final two WSOP main event winners still in contention for the, the 2023 main event world championship bracelet. But uh, they're both gone. Gonzo. Uh, Moneymaker started the day with 435K. And, you know, we, we know why, right? Do you know why Moneymaker's out? Because he ran out of chips? No, it's the Jeff Platt curse. Oh, the Jeff Platt curse. Yeah. Oh, Jeff Platt I know curse. about the Jeff Platt curse. It's real. It's very real this summer. Yeah. 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 Whoever talks to Jeff Platt, if you stand up, you are knocked out. Just get well, ready. I have a worse Jeff Platt curse than that. I oh. mean, it's one thing to be knocked out of a tournament. It's another thing to be knocked out of an industry. So that's a really bad <laughs> Jeff Platt curse. But you got it. I, I, both Chris and Joe making yeah. day five is great. Beautiful story. Love it. And this okay. is Moneymaker's multiple... He's made deep runs the last few years. So yeah, they both actually have had different histories since they won. When Moneymaker won in 03, yeah. he did not cash again until 2019. <laughs> and now he's cashed four straight years, not including the hybrid online yeah, small yeah. field. Hashem, on the other hand, after he cashed in 05, mm-hmm. he had a deep run in 06. Yeah. And then he cashed again in 09 and 2015. And then, of course, this year. So they both have had four caches since they won. But with Hashem, they've been spread out the whole time. Moneymaker had to wait a long time before he cashed again. And Moneymaker, of course, still... And they both just have one bracelet, both Hashem and Moneymaker. Yes, they do. And actually, Joe plays a lot. Moneymaker doesn't play a lot here. And Joe actually has turned into a great mixed game player. Most of his caches of the World Series the last 10 or 15 years are in Horse, Omaha 8, PLO, Stud 8. So he's evolved into a complete player, and it's a pleasure to see. That's great. There you go. So... Okay, well, okay, well, Moneymaker, you know, I, what I heard from him is that he really wanted to make, win a bracelet this year. And unfortunately, he only played the, what, the, the, the championship and the main event. I think he he's played done. a couple of events and, uh, you know, he's going back to Tennessee now. And- Chance Corneth is very upset. Chance Corneth, you, you heard about this. Going to dinner break, he's in a hand and gets called clock. Called clock after only two minutes, I think it was. And then, uh, you know, with dinner break approaching. Or, 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 they were in a dinner break. Right. The rest of the table had left. Yeah. And a third player, not the player he's playing against, but a third player called the clock on him. Yeah. Which I got to tell you is very small in a dinner break. I don't care if he had tanked for 30 seconds or 30 minutes. It's in the dinner break. It's very small. It's very unnecessary, but the clock can be used to tilt. And in this case, 
My we goodness, saw man. that player tilt Chance Corners at that moment. Yeah. To read the recap real quick, it was uh, Masato Yokosawa was in the hand with Chance. Let's see. It was a three bet to 90K. Action back to Yokosawa who called. Ace of hearts, nine of spades, deuce of spades. Yokosawa checked a corner who continued to have been a 60K. Boom, boom, check, raise, call. <clears throat> Turn on six of spades. Yokosawa let out. Corneth called seven of hearts, complete the board. You also announced a bet and put Corneth in the tank. And with the rest of the field going to dinner, Benitez opted to call the clock after just two minutes. And, and my God, man, Chance says, you're calling the clock to me when it's dinner break? You're just mad because I owned you in a hand. Now, I mean, yeah, and, and, and Chance said a couple other things that were a little worse than that. So yes. Chance could have handled it better. Yeah. But we all have our breaking point. And even, you know, this sounds ridiculous, but I once... I once left my own home game because I got mad at what happened at the table. And I walked out of my condo and I go, where am I going? I live here. I mean, where, you know, what am I going to do? But they got me so mad at my own home game. I walked away from the table and I was really pissed and did not return to the game for two hours. So I understand that chance kind of lost his cool there for a moment. True story. True story. And it's very unfortunate because, you know, we've always, we've always seen chances like a, a happy guy. I was looking for a picture of him angry. To try to use for this? Well, couldn't find one. We no, all he's have, always happy. We he's all have smiling. multiple personalities. In fact, that reminds me of back in the early 1970s, I think. Scheinberg has been honored with the biggest uh, honor from WPT. WPT honors. Love it. That's the biggest honor you can have. They, That's they, they, uh, <laughs> if, if it's called WPT honors, they I honor mean, you. How high can you get other than the WPT the highest, honors? The highest honor. Um, love it. Yeah. Over there at the, uh, I think it was over at the win that the WT held a special ceremony, their honors award ceremonies. And Isai Scheinberg was, was, uh, was, you know, one of these included in this. And the way that, uh, the way that they brought him up was so beautiful. And you've got, uh, Adam Pliska who, who asked, you know, if, if, please stand up if, if Isai Scheinberg has made a positive influence on your career in poker or on you in poker and 90% of the room immediately stood up and just started clapping. Like, Love to see this man. I mean, we gotta get him in the Hall of Fame as soon as possible. Gotta get you in the Hall of Fame as well. Well, I unfortunately, but, I am. I think I am a minority of one uh, on the Ishii Seinberg story. By the oh, way, so him and both Vince Van Patten, yes, w- uh, got into the WPT honors. Both right. well deserving. Yeah. Vince has had a great career at the WPT. I just wish he hadn't made Seven Days to Vegas, but that's a movie that shouldn't influence anything. So obviously, Ishii has uh, Seinberg's influence on on online poker. And the poker industry in general is unmatched. Yeah. And he will make the Hall of Fame one day. Uh, however, this is my take that I've always had, and people don't like it. When the U.S. changed those laws in, in 2008, it was a bad law, but it was the law. Many online operators, most significantly party poker, mm-hmm. stopped serving the U.S. market. Scheinberg and poker stars continued circumventing U.S. law. Okay? So they benefited from the good actors leaving. Now. I just have trouble with, you know, a businessman who essentially lined his pockets with poker gold while circumventing the law. So I understand that he then treated everybody. He, he cooperated with the U.S. government. He paid everybody off from poker stores and full tilt and, and bought it and took in their people. But that was all um, good business we, decision. We have to end it. I, I mean, I want to keep hearing you talk about this, but okay, unfortunately, there are rules to this. And now you have to shut up. That's just the way the way this whole go, thing go is ahead. built. Go ahead. They're calling the clock. Go like ahead. like Chance, we have to call the clock on you. Normally. Go ahead. Okay. All right. <laughs> this has been Calling the Clock. we got to pause real quick and thank our sponsors, Global Poker. If you haven't checked it out, it's a fantastic site to play on here. And if it's your first time checking it out, Poker News has a special code. Use code Poker News for a special gift from the Chad or the Norman Chad and Jesse show. Check it out, globalpoker.com. Norman, we have a special guest. Norman, Norman, it's okay. Hey. Hey. Well, I don't understand why we couldn't extend the, the segment a little longer. There's no advertisers. It's, it's, it's online. We could go on for two hours if we wanted to. <laughs> it's time to bring in our special guest this week. I don't know how to say things besides I'm excited. I'm excited. It's Ryan DePaulo. Let's bring him in. Hey, 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 buddy. Thanks. Hey, welcome. Hi. Welcome, dude. Welcome. Um, Norman Shad, Ryan DePaulo, you guys have met before? Yes, we have. Excellent. Good. Yeah, the other day in the hallway was the first proper conversation. We had a little bit about mixed game addiction growing, and now we evangelized Ari Angle. <laughs> I was trying to, yeah, you know, I was trying to bring another one into the tribe. Here. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. How, tell me, so you like mixed games? Um, yeah, I played some of the stud variants. I don't know if my brain's ready for them. I may be overly scared of them. I tried Raz this year, and I, I think I just got cooled. I probably also played horribly. But I did get unlucky, I think, in it. 
but my brain is just not um i think i gotta start with the draw games or 08 you know like uh I like both deuce to sevens, no limit, single draw and triple draw, even though they're pretty different. You're just, but because they're draw games and not removal, like right away, find the bring in removal, removal, removal. I can't yet be good at that. I don't know. No, it's, for, I, I it's love a different brain set. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. I love mixed games too. And it's, I mean, you're right. It's like, I feel like no limit hold'em. It's just, it's, it's, it's boring. Well, this is what you do when you become bad at No Limit Hold'em and you can't beat the games anymore. You just label yourself a mixed games pro and then just like go go there and then win the 250 men fields. I don't like that characterization, but if he wants to say that, he can say that. Yeah. You know, I get tired of hearing that there's like a stud or Omaha 8 specialist. You know, all the people who play the mixed games play like 25 games. The No Limit guys, you're the specialist. Mm. You play one game. Please. How do you feel about the player of the year, potentially, Ian Matakis? I don't know when this will air. Sorry if I'm oh, blowing up timelines. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, great. So, yeah, he's in the lead, and he's just no limit and some PLO. Do you feel that's not cool? Yeah, I mean, if you're player, if you're the poker player of the year, you generally should be able to play more than one variant. So, yeah, I mean, if you, because of the point system, if he wins it, that's fine. But uh, while I want to talk about the best poker players, I'm talking about people who play more than one game. Yeah, because it's general poker. I wonder if they added, if they could do something where I think it's a good system now where it's uh, the field size times the buy-in type of multiplier, which is very fair. But then if they added in maybe a thing in diversity of cash is like a little bonus. If you have one, like say you were to add a cash in one mixed game, that it's yeah. more than just a normal min cash in it or something maybe to do what you're saying. That'd be, I think I'd be down for that. But whatever. <laughs> Smooth. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's get into some good questions for Ryan. Uh, do you want to start this off, Norman? Yeah. Who is Ryan DePaulo? All I know is that one day he shows up on my my little laptop, just all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and he actually plays poker as well. So who is Ryan DePaulo? Are you a poker player? Or are you a media personality? I don't know. I think mm, a hybrid <laughs> of the two. It's been split. Master of none. You know. <laughs> I'm trying both. <laughs> I started vlogging just like wanting to create YouTube, just wanting to create videos. And then gambling and poker was always like a hobby of mine and kind of like backdoor re fell in love with it or reinvested in it by realizing there's a whole built in audience of people for gambling on YouTube. And I love gambling anyway. And then how am I not going to lose a gambling? It's either poker or DFS. DFS is way top heavy. Anyway, poker. I, I don't know what I am is the answer. Although I maybe answered it. I don't know how you feel about that. There you go. I don't know if media personalities are this long winded, Norm. What do you, how do you feel? No, you seem to be a burgeoning media personality. Thanks, man. Without Absolutely. Question. I'm trying to be. Absolutely. Yeah. That I put more energy mm -hmm. into this summer, probably than actually getting better at poker, even though I played a lot. So I think, yeah, I, if I lost the ability to do one or the other, I would just give up playing poker to, to make content or be a personality in all seriousness. So you went to school for theater, right? Yeah, yeah. My high school is like uh, the movie Fame was about my high school. You have to audition again, and it's a public school in New York City. And I went for acting. I didn't take it as seriously. I was kind of a punk shocker, like. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was great. It was an amazing opportunity. And I mean, but you can tell, right? There's certain people in the poker in the poker community who have a theater background, and I was in theater too in like high school and college. So I see like you and Caitlin Kameski and others who are rising up, who are great content creators, who also have a good you know background in poker. And I, I love to see it because it's like you just know the alcohol personality because there's also people you know in poker who are on the spectrum or just internal, like who are just, you know, not outgoing at all. I mean, we have we have the entire range. And so seeing you and the stuff you're making, for me, I, I love to see it because I can just see those characteristics and it's exciting, man. I'm, I'm enjoying it. However, I got to ask, what the fuck is going on with Joey the Mush? How does this, how did this happen? Like, what's the story behind yeah, him? I love, I love Mush. I love Mush. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's fine. Yeah. Dude, yeah. ask. I mean, it's not, it's not me you're going to offend. It's him. No, he doesn't care. He knows no. he's a mush. So uh, he's been a friend of mine for a while. He's just a long time victim, <laughs> long time bad beat story guy. He like, you know, the typical friend who's like, oh, I just got screwed and then tells you the hand history and he played it horribly, like made like five mistakes somehow <laughs> in like a three street hand. And, uh, and it's just generally unlucky. And then I realized I wasn't winning when he was around at first. He also thinks that I'm a worse gambler than him when it's not even close. He's way worse than me at, at whatever. So he's just a general mush. And then, then I just started calling him that. And there was a Joey dumb mush in, in Jersey known a little bit in Jersey casinos. And I feel bad out mushing him with my mush. Mm -hmm. So shout out to the original Joey, but my Joey is a proper mush. He was <laughs> the deepest he's ever been in the biggest tournament, the venom on, on ACR or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, 2650 buy-in the, at my house playing day two, 
the only time in a year and a half my internet went out and it was out for like 15 minutes. He was ready to die. Like stuff like that happens oh. to him all the time. He just karma universe run bad. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> but he'll be okay. He chopped a $200 Bonita Springs tournament for like 1200 each five ways. So. <clears throat> Now you have. Uh, there you go. There's, a highlight. There's a highlight. You have found you had found almost all your success <laughs> online, uh, and then out of nowhere, in a field of thirteen thousand plus at the Colossus, you finished third a few years back. How the heck did you do that? It was crazy. I just like ran well. I, I don't even know. No, I mean, I knew nothing. Like I really was not. It was after that that I started being like, okay, now get a coach, study a little more. It was just like anyone running hot in any of these fields, getting lucky. And then the night before the final table, got a crash course in ICM from a friend and Mitch Halverson, who's like currently like second in chips in the main right now. And they were like, just, just, it feels like you're going to bust and just fold out, but just wait. And then I like waited until third and then learned about stuff later. I don't know. Mm. I, I just got very lucky, I guess. How quick of a learning curve do you have? Because I do remember you've, you've talked about when you went out to play your first live tournament or something, you talked to your father and he had two words of advice for you. Don't punt. And yet <laughs> yeah. you still punt. Yeah. I still punt. My learning curve is interesting. I think like in 2020 during COVID, I spent a lot of time studying um, with friends, like learning uh, solver stuff before the sites made it easy to just do. Like we were running our own Sims and stuff. And I got quite a bit better so that in January 2021, the first live tournament I came back to, uh, it was like a $600 six max in Florida. I won. I and I was just like, there were so many spots though, for the first time returning to live poker that I actually like, oh, I know the answer to this. Oh, I know the answer to this. And it was super cool. And then since then, I haven't really improved my game much. I've kind of rested on those laurels and it just like slowly done less and less good. But um, I, I wouldn't say I have particularly quick learning curve. Um, I think average, it's just a matter of putting in the time in this day and age with the resources that are there, I think. Thinking about some of your content, like I've, I've been a viewer of your blogs for, <clears throat> God, I feel like years and years now. Um, but what I loved originally, like, you know, you've definitely evolved a lot. Definitely a lot of evolution to like your play style and everything. But man, my favorite ones were when you got banned from Borgata. Like when you show all that emotion, when you were like doing that kind of stuff, like when you look back, like what are your thoughts, what are your memories about like that early content was so emotional, so like wild yeah it's funny because i'm documenting my like poker and gambling journey in a genuine way mm -hmm. and as the addiction that is poker tournaments progress you need more and more to get the buzz so i'm less and less emotional as i go on and it sucks because i'm yeah. just documenting the real story of me but like i i was screaming in my opponent's ears to win a flip in like the second level of a 600 and now i'm just like <laughs> sitting there stoically like all the misregs and i i can't fake like getting that back which is why no. i'm like thinking of other other ways to be in content or make my videos interesting, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, but getting banned from Borgata, though, that wasn't fun. Uh, luckily, I got unbanned, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was just wild. You seem to be, <clears throat> to put it generously, a live wire, okay? So when I watch, I've been watching you on uh, High Noon a few times on uh, Poker Go's YouTube channel. <clears throat> and you're alternately terrific and terrifying. It, it seems to me at any given moment, you could be canceled or deported. How do you how yes. do you approach when you're on high new what you're doing? I don't know. I mean, I, I like. I don't know. I think I just started saying whatever, like in my vlogs and stuff and being like, I don't know. I just like needling people. I'm like an, a troll, like at heart or something. It's like I like 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 tweaking stuff, I think, a little bit as like a something's wrong with it. Some impulsive like thing to say. stuff. I don't know. Or I'm just trying to be funny. I don't know what's wrong. There's something wrong with me, partially. No, 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 disagree, disagree. But I've been beaten down to terrain it in because I don't actually ever want to hurt anyone's feelings. You know what I mean? Like when I like I say the R word or stuff, like if as soon as somebody who was retarded would come up to me and be like, you're hurting my feelings, I would immediately stop. But in the meantime, if it's just other people who think that other people might be offended because other people are offended. I'm like, you're retarded. Like, wait. The, but okay. the, so, <laughs> oh, oh, no. you had a good oh, learning no. curve on, on this particular area of your That's life. That's a bad example. No, but. <laughs> oh, God. That's no, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's high wire. I don't know. It's not really intentional, but I'm willing to learn. And I don't want to hurt people. But I do also love, I do like think people like hearing how you talk with your friends or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's authentic and organic. I just was wondering if you had any 
pushback or feedback from people telling you, oh, you can't be talking about that or can you stop mentioning the R word? Yes, yeah, they did actually tell me that uh, after like like just recently. But I, I kept asking them, I was like, you know, I'm capable of like not cursing. I'm capable of reining it in. And, and Brent Hanks was like, no, no, it's good. And then eventually he's like, all right, maybe chill with the R word. <laughs> and I was like, done, no problem. So that's why I'm saying it on your show. I'm canceling you guys. So <laughs> hey, oh, let's go. We're canceled. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good. Excellent. Um, how many WCPs have you been to? Um, this is like my third. I went for one week in 2019 where like I got third in the Colossus and yep. I played two events, cashed the first one, the tag team, got third in Colossus. It was still my day job. Then this is my third full like WSOP, I okay, guess. So fourth total, three full ones. Yeah. yeah. Are you a withered pro? I don't know. I, I like to think I'm not, but yeah, I kind of, um, the idea of starting a tournament with 200 big blinds, that's going to be half hour levels and showing up on time um, does make me feel like I want to die. So I would say, yeah, I'm getting there. But but it's so exciting. Like the idea of like <laughs> getting in, like getting anywhere past some point. I'm, I'm like, I, I'm a combo draw I'm of we, a withered pro. But that, it's what happens, right? It's like the, the draw of WCP from far away. It's like a beautiful island. Like, oh, I want to go there. I want to be there. Then you get there, you're like, okay, these lines are hard to deal with. Hey, I can't eat. You know, all these. It's oh, well, just, that stuff I'm okay with. But yeah, I, I do uh, understand all, that. All the different pieces of it, yeah, and the levels and the all the big ones, all the weighing. And I'll snap out of it, though. Like, I'll be like, you're, what do you, t why, how, you have no right to be cranky. Like, you're getting to be in your dream and play WSOP. It's insane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's moments that I'll just be like, like, find myself maybe lose a flip and be like, of course, or like in my head for a second. I'm like, stop it. Don't think like, like, stop being cranky. And I run better when I'm not misreg at the table for sure. There's some karma when you're like, I believe adding to the table and not just being like a headphones on just miserable, like that I run better. As you've developed both, you know, poker and content, we've seen people like Doug Polk who does great content and starts playing less poker and can make it work. Joy Ingram playing less poker, a lot more content makes that work. Is that the type of approach or road you would take or what type of, how, how are you going to balance the two? Yeah, I don't know the answer. I think that I uh, ought to do that, like play less poker and focus more on content. But it's funny because their videos are not um, kind of relying upon them actually playing anyway. I'm vlogging myself playing firsthand. So for a while, they've been one and the same. But this is why I've enjoyed doing High Noon and trying to do commentary with Will at uh, Big Bet Poker about at Tropicana or whatever, Bally's, that uh, making other content or being in other media stuff that doesn't require me to play, even though I love playing. So I think, yeah, that would be the best strategy for me. If I were to zoom out and give myself advice, it'd be play less poker. But then I'm addicted to tournaments too much that like when I zoom in, I'm like, ah, I want to play. So <clears throat> when it comes to you and how you approach poker, were you like a, a moneymaker era? Guy, or were you like, where was it like, what, what we do you think attracted you to the scene? Yeah, what, what attracted me to the scene was no, I wasn't really aware of it until a roommate. I was living in a 10 bedroom share in Chinatown, like straight up illegal, like an ex brothel Whoa. that was like month to month. Out. Yeah, it had like office tile ceiling, like you could punch in the squares and definitely rats in the ceiling <laughs> and stuff. And this French kid Sylvan was playing a three dollar knockout 90 man sit and goes on full tilt and was like, Yeah, you can win $97. And I was like, Oh my god. And then played on his account for like two days. Had no clue that you're not supposed to do that. And he's like, get your own account. And then just kind of <laughs> then got into watching poker from there. And then was like caught up on the old episodes, watched all the stuff, watched you obviously forever. Like I love the old edited episodes of, of WSOP. Mm -hmm. Like I'll still watch. They're so great. And I'm so glad I got to play with those Rio chips once in the main that, yeah. I, that I watched forever. <laughs> I only accumulated two greens, I think, but whatever. <laughs> So when it comes to like your, your path in, do you have like a main influence? You think like when it comes to like a Helmuth Negranu, someone like that, that you looked at as, as someone that you enjoyed and wanted to be like, that was, did that ever happen for you? No, I kind of backed into it. I mean, I liked Tom Dewan's aggression and stuff, but I never, I mean, just being where I am now, like in the world of poker, mm -hmm. what came from content first. So I, yeah. I just, it wasn't really any poker player inspiring me. I kind of just backed into it, but I'm a fan of like all of them. You know, I'm a, I knew that I love the game and I was a fan of a lot of these guys for a while. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this because I know you work with Will. Uh, and I saw you tweeted yesterday that uh, Will Jaffe is a great addition to the uh, WSOP booth. Let's think about that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just right uh, now, let me, okay. let's just do a quickly math thing. Who was subtracted from the booth 
let's say, when you were watching, to allow Will to be added to the booth. <laughs> well, I didn't look, look, look at me, son. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't consider this part of it, honestly. I guess you didn't. And you're going to see me the next day, didn't you, punk? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I'll be in the booth again. But yes. I uh, heard. I asked Jesse on the way in, like, what? <laughs> uh-huh. I didn't think about that part of oh, it. Oh, you're going to think about I that I was just trying to it. give love to my boy on high noon. Okay. No, you, as you should. And and Will, actually, I've I've tweeted uh, Will several times when I saw his tough convos about how much I was enjoying them. I did, I did not know Will. And so when I started to see his tough convos last year for the first time, I said, this is, this is really great content. So yeah, I, he's I really funny. I enjoyed that. But you're the GOAT. I wouldn't. Yeah, no. I, I didn't think about who it was replacing. So I, I think the takeaway from this is that Norman will be watching High Noon expecting you to say great things about him in the booth. No, no. So he'll, be, he'll, be, he'll be zoned in, turning the volume up as you approach the mic each time. So just, there you go. I'm good with it. No. So I, I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I got to go out to New Jersey. And I got to meet up with Ryan in the parking lot of the Whole Foods that I, he won I his online bracelet. And dude, that was one of my favorite things. Yeah, that was a great bit you came up yeah, with. That was yeah, super yeah. clever. I hope the but, poor person who asked, the, I hope it's still there. But. I so hope it is too. Like I'm, I'm thinking about ways we can try to send someone. Like maybe we send like some merch bags out there and just beg someone to go take a picture, hoping that it's still yeah. There. Or maybe I'll stop by there. It's kind of far from my house, it's but very it's not far from your house. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be someone who lives close by. Yeah, but it's I be. I on the way to Manhattan one day. But I don't know if we explicitly just said we soup. They super glued a plaque of at the parking spot that I won the bracelet in. Uh, he and says I think they. We, he says they. He means I. I. I broke the law and I monkey glued it to the concrete. At Whole Foods. Well, you had a co-conspirator with you. I did. I did. Matt Hansen. I'll say his name out loud. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, we, um, you know, Poker News sent us out on the East Coast to do some uh, content. And uh, we were definitely looking for some fun stories to tell amongst like going around all the casinos. And uh, it was so cool to meet up with you at that actual Whole Foods. And um, I mean, you know, we, we talked about it then, but even now, like how, how surreal was that situation? How surreal was that experience when you got to actually close WSOP, knowing you want a bracelet, but you're not in the, you're not in the Thunderdome. You're not in Vegas. Even you're just in your car. There's no one around besides someone pushing carts towards yeah. the front door. No, I'll never forget. It was crazy. It was like the insane, like daylight. It ended so late in the, in the morning. I can't believe the horrible setting to play and getting disconnected from the Wi-Fi every hour, switching to the phone and switching back. Like just so stupid, but uh, it was amazing. Yeah, no. And I'm glad that, COVID ended, not because of the lives saved, but because that there won't be as many chances for someone else to do that, that it'll be a very COVID once off story oh, yeah. that oh, I don't yeah. imagine someone will need to play from a parking lot. Well, nobody ever really needed to. I, just, no. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, it's no. amazing though. People have it? Wi-Fi at home or hotels, but what you do is still, it was so, it was so unique. And so, I mean, it was just great. Like as someone in the media, I saw it I was like, fuck, yes, let's go. This was just so good. You know, people texting me like, oh, it's it's on brand and this and that. I was just actually doing it because I thought it was the best way to play. And then I <laughs> yeah. see a headline like D- 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 DePaul wins bracelet in lot. And I'm like, oh, that is like would go with someone who's calling themselves a generic gambler. That's pretty yes. irresponsible. So before then and after then, how many times you've actually shopped at a Whole Foods? <laughs> like six before oh. and seven oh. after. Oh, that's higher than I would have thought. I, I, took, I took the under for I would check the under. How many times have you been yeah. in a Wawa? <laughs> oh wait I, I moved close to a wawa probably like 50 now more i would think so way more actually what am i talking about no, what? You, you got wawa written all over you. <laughs> damn what, what, it i'm your... from new york city i don't want to have wawa written oh, all over no. me but i do i'm becoming a jersey and they have good sandwiches i was gonna say what's your sandwich order at wawa yeah like turkey and just, i'm not proud of any of this people people <laughs> ask me where are you from at the table and i'm like jersey now but new york i still like give this whole thing like i lived in new york my whole life till two years ago but i now i live in jersey but to a withered Jersey rag. Beautiful. I get, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I know I'm yeah. eye rolling at like, I'm, oh, poor me. I have a, I have a house. Like I got, <laughs> I got to buy a house with money I made winning in a parking lot and stuff. It's like, yeah, boo-hoo. <laughs> so good. So good. All right. I think that it's going to give you more of the questions. I'm, I'm, I'm still, no, I'm done with them. I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Ryan, thank you so much, dude. This is a pleasure. So much fun having you here in the booth with us. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, follow Ryan on Twitter, YouTube, all the things. See it, watch his latest vlog. Do you have a new vlog coming out anytime soon? I don't know the schedule. I for WSOP, I just dump it and they do it. They but... do it. They don't. Yeah, yeah. Smooth. Well, something's coming soon. It's gotta be. So check it out. Thanks. We'll be back next week. See you later. <laughs>